Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Dator. I'm the president. I'm the current president of uh, Vapors PH. Um, today, um, due to some uh, uh, what you call this uh, scheduling concerns, we have uh, prepared the video for you guys. Um, this is um, an interview I had with the co-veners of uh, Harm Reduction Alliance of the Philippines. Um, so we will talk about the, the perception of Filipinos with respect to the idea of uh, harm reduction. And uh, thereafter, I will be more than happy to answer some, uh, some of the questions that uh, you guys might have um, with, with respect to the status of uh, the advocacy of harm reduction here in the Philippines. So um, uh, please uh, watch the video and then we'll talk after. scope event uh, featured by uh, CAFRA. And uh, for today, um, we're going to be interviewing the, the conveners of uh, one of the organizations that are really very close to my heart. This is the Philippine Harm Reduction Forum. And uh, do we have them on board today. Um, they are very busy individuals. Uh, the two runs, I, I use... I fund the uh, all them. They just finished. They just wrapped up an event uh, a while ago, and uh, here they are, Prof Ron and Doc Ron. Hello. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Peter. Good, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, first and foremost, congratulations um, when you're just recently concluded the event. It's very enlightening, and uh, I hope na hindi kayo mapagod sa patuloy na pag <laughs> sa ating uh, advocacy. Uh, first off, uh, Prof. Ron, Prof. Ron ako naman ano, uh, you can give us a little background about uh, HARAP. Yes. Okay, uh, HARAP stands for the Harm Reduction Alliance of the Philippines. We were established in 2018. We, we came from different specialties and fields. I'm a medical technologist. One is a pharmacist, one is into statistician and Dr. Rodriguez is a pediatrician. So practically my background is on uh, the medical and the medical technologies and I had a public health degree from UT. So we, I could just educate people that harm reduction is actually one basic concept in public health. So basically, what's in our harm reduction public health yeah, prevents people from getting sick and the healthy people should be remain healthy. So to start with, yun ang trust ng aming organization. So in 2018, we started out the organization with the hope and support of the other equivalent harm reduction organizations within the area muna in Southeast Asia. And nakakatuwa din kasi na we gained the same respect and enthusiasm coming from our equivalents from Southeast Asia. So we started with uh, advocacy, we collaborated with other groups like your HIV group, the road safety, and your biosecurity group. And now we are we're glad to be uh, co-presented by the Commission on Human Rights with, with, the, with our recent event. So we focus on advocacy, health education, inform people how to, to learn about reducing harm in our everyday lives, and also doing research. And doing pag nag research nagkakaroon ng substantial evidence yung mga bagay na dapat na realize ng Pilipino na ah, pag ginawa pala natin ito, mababa ang risk natin magkasakit, dumala, at at mamatay. So that is the trust of our organization. We started in 2018. And focus is on harm reduction, health education, and doing research. Very, sounds very academic, scientific, pero simple lang talaga. Keep people healthy and give them an alternative to less harm uh, in their lives. So, so Ronald, may add on. And I think, para mas maintindihan nila, no? uh, another aspect, as mentioned by Sir Ron, harm reduction is universal. You know? It fits all aspects of human activity and human behavior. No? As a pediatrician, no, we, ha have we know that the pediatric age group are the most vulnerable no, in terms of possible abuse or harm. And uh, that is why our advocacy, okay, each, each, each convener of the Harm Reduction Alliance of the Philippines would have their different process of advocacy. But in general, 
in general, it is all about reducing the harm. If we expose an individual you know, to hazards and then we expose them for a long period of time, a certain period of time, then we form risk. And the risk, we reduce that by having interventions of yes. harm reduction, whether these are simple methods at home or policies in government. Yes. These are all things that will reduce injury and even death in public health settings. Yes. Um, you know, you know what, guys, Prof. Ron, Doc. Ron, no? um, I, I, I really love talking to you guys. It's always very educating. Um, gusto ko yung sinabi ni uh, Prof. Ron kanina that um, it sounds so technical. Uh, sometimes it's uh, very scientific, but uh, you guys nailed it. It's really just it could be as simple as wearing wearing a helmet. We just wanted to make sure that you know um, your your the risk is reduced as much as possible. Um, just a quick question: How how did you guys come up with this? I, I know you're very passionate with with all the harm reduction. Um, I've I've seen you guys in Congress. I've seen you host uh, Philippine Harm Reduction Forums numerous times. We have collaborated so many times. But I'm really intrigued on uh, why why you guys choose this particular advocacy. I think Sir Ron can answer that because he's the lead convener. And I think he yes, has something please. to do when he was still in taking his master's in public health. No, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I realized kasi na parang uh, in, in mainstream scientific world, parang when you when you when the patient comes in, mo siyang gamot, curative, papauin mo siya, then that's it. But in public health kasi, you don't wait people to get sick. You you prevent them from getting sick, and harm reduction is one way to prevent them from getting sick. So you don't nagsimula yun na parang ah hindi pa lalaging parang typical na pasyente pupunta sa clinic, ibigay mo ng gamot, educate mo siya, uwi na siya tapos ng kwento. But harm reduction is public health, so yung mga ineducate natin sila, wag kang gagamit ng ganitong um, uh, device. You use this less less harmful device to educate them. Bakit ano ba mga benefits sa sa kanila? So doon ako medyo na curious because I'm in a hard, hardcore scientific world, I'm a medical technology. So nakita ko may mundo pala na hindi lang curative, it's more on preventive. So preventive is public health and practically harm reduction is public. So do not start. Then I I got interested with the principles, the approaches in public health when I was studying in UP Manila. So sabi ko, sana ma-apply ko yung natutunan ko sa public health sector. So parang ay nagtagbi din naman kasi I got to meet all people uh that's just like Dr. Ronald here that we share the same initiatives and advocacy. Then yun nabuo na na parang okay, natutunan namin sa public health, theoretically na apply namin ngayon sa harm reduction to the organization that we had now. So don't don't chat and start personally sa akin. May I just add to Peter no? Uh in pediatrics I think another term for harm reduction in pediatrics which I myself didn't know it was harm reduction. It's called anticipatory guidance. Mm. And even children from our one year old onwards, there are certain abilities that they can do. You know, they start walking at age between 10 months to one year old, assisted walking. Then at three years old, ang tawag namin sa kanila canto boy, canto girl. Bakit? Kasi kasi taas sila ng table. No? So, canto boy, canto girl, untog yan dito, untog doon. So, what do we do? We can buy devices to put around the table to prevent injury. Another thing that I always tell the parents, if you have kids, toddlers at home, please do not use those uh, heaters na nilalagay sa ibabaw ng table. Tapos, mm -hmm. kayang hataki ng bata yung table cover. Because once the child falls on that table cover, the thermos in the hot water will, you know, Definitely scald the child, no? Ma, ma pass up yung, yung bata. So these are little things, no? I didn't know it was harm reduction during that time. During that time, but now, time. guys, what a term! <laughs> guidance, that's right. And now we can see that we should anticipate guidance also to the general public, on because we all have risky, we have risky behaviors. We all yes. engage right. in risky oh, behaviors every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. I in see. Now I understand, and, uh, and that's probably a new term for me, a new now anticipatory guidance. I like it. Um, now that I have a better grasp of really uh, the, 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 
the motivation behind the rap. Um, let's go to a little bit of specifics. What what do you guys think? Uh, with the fair in general, what do you think? How does the Filipino people perceive harm reduction? What's the current status? You think of harm reduction here in the Philippines? Uh, uh, yun nga sabi ko nga kanina. Ang concept lang kasi karamihan sa atin ngayon, gay person, yung ganun lang. Punta sa doktor, bigay kamot, advice ng konti, uwi na. That's, that's practically curative. So sabi ko nga, harm reduction is public. Medyo kailangan natin i-reinforce ang mga Filipinos when it comes to what is public health really. So when you ask me, ano ang status ng harm reduction sa Philippines, uh, medyo hindi pa siya nasa mainstream awareness ng mga Filipinos ngayon. So sa nasa, natun lang tayo sa curative part na hindi gamot, punta doktor, gano'n pati again, anticipatory, we anticipate something harm will happen, and we do precautionary measures. So, uh, Filipinos kailangan, like, yung ginagawa ko ng harap ngayon, is one way to, to get into a main Filipinos conscious that when it comes to harm reduction. So, kailangan talaga thorough health education kasi medyo, we fall short on that. Tapos, isa pa yung uh, the advent of social media, the fake news, nakaka-affect din yung sa learning sa Pilipinas na mas naniniwala pa sa mga napapanood nila at nakikita at nababasa sa social media than just learning to the right scientific basis ng mga bagay. So, konti pa eh. Kailangan pa ng reinforcement ng mga Pilipinos when it comes to harm reduction. Kung baga hindi pa nga alam yung reason behind or ano ang explanation behind that, medyo ano na eh, parang hindi pa, hindi pa entertain concept and for the mga Pilipinos. So, kailangan sa Pilipinos may educate sila ng, ng primary physicians nila or kung hindi anybody from the family members in the medical field, may educate sila. So, we fall short on that and that is one we would like to do just like in the forum that we had. We hope that we reach a lot of Filipinos to bring in awareness like in COVID ng mga ganyan bagay. So, vaccination hesitancy, etc. Wearing masks, etc. So, yun. So, Kulang pa rin eh. So, kaya nga may mga organization like us is to keep on reminding people na sana Philippines will be more accepting now na uh, we be aware of our sir, of our status right now and how do we prevent things from ha- not, not letting things happen especially pag na-expose tayo sa harm and disability. So, kulang pa eh. Kailangan pa ng reinforcement na lang. Um, actually, I agree. I, I totally agree with what you said, uh, Prof. Arod. Ano? I think in general, Filipinos are hard-headed in a way. If they if they think of something, you, you prove it otherwise, you, ha- you really have to prove to them that uh, you are right in, let's say, black and white. And another thing that I also agree on is that we are not really science-based, we are personality-based. If uh, famous individual, diba, Doc Rod says something like, for example, a very famous, uh, let's say, na lang, uh, showbiz personality would say that uh, anticipatory guidance is bad. Yes. You know, even the doctors, even those who are in the medical field, you have all the data saying that it is good. Uh, I think a good 30% of the Filipinos will still believe the, the the showbiz personality and it's yes. just so sad in 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 the current state of events here in our country now i'll go back to a little bit of the specifics no uh, we all know that i'm from the vapors ph i'm the president and we have worked for quite some time already uh, we all know that cigarette smoking has already been here since time immemorial at uh, we have attended so many hearings about it before can you guys give us a, a little bit of insight on the difference of uh, uh, smoking combustible cigarette versus vaping? So, uh, personally, I had my research on that. So, mm-hmm. on, the, on my level of knowledge, I'm specializing on body fluid analysis and and hematology sa complete blood count. So, personally, on my research, on my perspective to answer that question, no? Uh, may isang may isang practice jan that poses more harm or risk. May isang portion or group jan that are that are into exposed to a less risk. So if I would say that in my research, I had my research done that we able we are able to measure 
in blood in the urine of certain biomarkers that are associated to the risk of developing lung cancer. So sabihin okay. na natin isa kaming grupo na e-cigarette group and isang grupo na uh, should we say that they are the traditional uh, conventional cigarette smokers. So within two groups na yon, we, we both collected samples of urine and blood. Then we measure on both groups in biomarkers associated to the risk of lung cancer like your codeine and your polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon, yung dalawang yun. Both groups, we measure namin, tapos kumuha kami ng control yung mga taong hindi nag-smoke ng cigarette, traditional, and isang grupo uh, na no smoking at all and no exposure to the cigarette. So, anong lumabas sa research namin? Uh, of course, those who are exposed to conventional cigarette have the most uh, expressed uh, value of those biomarkers associated to lung cancer. Hindi naman nakakagulat na yun. But when we try to compare the levels of these biomarkers compared to those who are doing alternatives to cigarettes and com compared to those who are not exposed at all, almost walang significant difference. So ibig sabihin, ang baba ng risk dun sa grupo na hindi exposed sa cigarette but exposed to alternatives to cigarette ay napakababa ng risk because mababa rin ang level ng mga biomarkers associated to lung cancer. So if I may answer that question, based on my perspective as a medical technologist, we measure biomarkers in the body fluid. So based on that, I would say, relatively, I saw the evidence that talaga, there's this group that are really showing that they have low, uh, low biomarkers, meaning they have low risk to developing lung cancer. I think that's my answer to it, based on the perspective as a researcher on my field. And may I just add, Sir Peter, no? aside from what mentioned by Sir Ron, there are numerous studies already showing that uh, alternative uh, non-conventional cigarette smoking actually would have a lesser exposure to your molecules that would actually cause no, yung magpukot ng possible lung cancer. No? In fact, one of the presentation a while ago by yes. uh, one yes. of the other speakers, I was really surprised in the he mentioned of the study on the air quality of indoor among conventional cigarette smokers and non-heated tobacco. It was quite astonishing that the level of toxins in the indoor environment, air quality, was lesser. So that only means it would have less harm. Okay? It may not be fully 100%, uh, uh, but there is the decrease in the harm. So evidence will tell you that, that it's less harmful. We are not really uh, deliberately saying as an organization of harm reduction to say that uh, we are promoting the use of these alternatives. What we're saying is that based on our perspective as researchers in our respective fields say that I may isang grupo talaga na mas papapa ang exposure sa harm. That's what, just what, what we're just telling. And uh, Prof, uh, Doc, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I think at the onset of uh, this discussion you made mention that we have tendencies to do risky things yes but by, by, by the end of the day if you can stop riding a motorcycle then be it uh, <laughs> what, what we are what what harap is advocating is simply if you can't stop it try to find uh less harmful or safer alternatives to those risky uh, yes. behaviors i should say that uh, you are doing because and i would go ahead prof yeah if i would just reiterate to say in public health there we have i know all of those who have background to public health levels of prevention primary level secondary and tertiary when you're trying to advocate on the use of less harmful alternatives we're trying to hit on the secondary up until tertiary level of prevention so if it's a vehicle less harm less likely to have complications, less likely to lead to death. So that is harm reduction. So harm reduction is really into the concept of public health based on the levels of prevention that is being incorporated sa theoretical teachings of public health. Okay. Um, just a few more questions before you can give us a background of what happened today. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, in the past few years, um, I've seen an increase in uh, people who have switched from um smoking combustible uh, traditional combustible cigarettes to let's call it vaping uh, do you think it has impacted the filipinos in general at this point 
because uh nga eh kasi hindi hindi pa masyado naiintindihan ng Filipino so uh, maybe some people would see it as it's an another form of price but not unless they are being taught or health educated on this na may lumalabas na itong alternatives and it's not a it's not technically advice but it's, it's it's giving people a less harmful alternative so brings us back to basic health education we really have to educate them na akala kahit yung mga ano din elderly or the parents would see it as ah baka naman mas mas we are introducing to our generation another form of vice but not really but you are really introducing them the concepts of of having an alternative less harmful uh, alternatives than to a very harmful evidently very harmful option so yun yan uh, kailangan may educate pa rin so ang impact sa Filipinos uh, negative agad baka ma-addiction ma- na naman yan another naman pagkakaulumingan ng mga, ba- mga kabataan kasi nga medyo fall short tayo sa education so we have to keep them educated educating that pag walang tayong har- uh, less harmful alternative ito ang mga mangyayari sa mga anak natin sa mga family members natin uh, mabab could have a, a, a shorter life expectancy or kapag binigyan natin sila ng less harmful alternatives ito least likely kang maglip to cancer, least likely kang uh, mag-develop ng iba pang mga degenerative diseases, and masahaba ang expected uh, lifespan ng tao. So, not unless we taught them that, we teach them that, hindi nila marirealize yung benefit of having harm reduction or health alternatives. And uh, just to mention also, Sir Ron mentioned of educating, no? nandun na tayo eh. And specifically for your group, Sir Peter, I know there are a lot of uh, members of your group who are probably before cigarette uh, convention, cigarette smokers. Eh, paano naman sila? If they want to continue life, yes. no, they should be they should be given the option to make decisions. That's why, aside from education, policy should be uh, established, no, to, so that you make all options available to everyone. I think that was mentioned by one of the speakers a while ago, uh, Attorney Tempesa, who mentioned yep. that uh, human right, okay, one element of human right is health access. No? Yes. And in health access, you should provide all uh, options to the patient. Yes. Because the, the patient is a sentient individual. He can make decisions. But we should be informed decisions. That's why it's part of the education to tell them that these are the, these are the alternatives, these are the risks. Look at the risk. Is this more beneficial for you? Then they make a decision. The better they could arrive to better decisions, uh, they have to be educated first. Yeah. So uh, I, I mean, we, we have hammered on the word education. Um, let, let's as a final segment of this particular discussion. Uh, I understand you just finished uh, the Philippine Harm Reduction Forum a, a couple of minutes ago, and I really appreciate uh, you giving us you giving me this time to really just talk about what we're doing. So tell us something about uh, what the Philippine Harm Reduction Forum is all about. When it when, when did it actually begin? And uh, what's your mission? Yes, we started 2019. Kasi nga, advocacy on, on uh, uh, education. So 2019, pre-pandemic, we, ha- we are lucky to have it an uh, in-person, live, site event in, uh, in Holiday in Makati. Then to our surprise, so we, we we launched on that event, and we're happy. Not not really, ano, hindi pa ganong kadami ang response, pero we're just happy to have started that event. Yes. Then come 2020, tempre, you know what happened because of the, the the pandemic, we had it in the virtual forum, just like what we had this year. So despite of it, natuwaring kami kasi we cannot we can't we can't really stop by the pandemic to stop our advocacy. So we have the support of our equivalent harm reduction organizations in the region. At syempre, natutuwa kami na gano'n. And also other advocacy groups that are not really into tobacco harm reduction, but also into other harm reduction like pediatric, dental public health, biosecurity, and now we have the human rights people uh, organization. So, natutuwa kami na every year as we we, we decide to, to, to go on to have our yearly event, Dumadami rin yung mga positive uh, response and now we have the organization of the Commission, uh, Commission on Human Rights. So 
Ganun pa din naman, we are broadening our our perspective on top on harm reduction and we're happy to to have more people coming in and more people uh, uh, extending our support to us in terms of having our good speakers and we have resource uh, persons and also we enjoy the intelligent in, in, uh, exchange of thought because of it, right na virtual. Um, this this is uh, a question I'd like to ask uh, Doc uh, Ron. No? Um, so how how was today's ano how was today's uh, Philippine Crime Reduction Forum? Can you just give us a little just a quick summary of uh, who the speakers are maybe or what they talked about? Well, actually, there we have a lot of speakers for this event. No? One would be as mentioned by Sir Ron. I really like the discussion on the. Uh, human rights, the human rights, because health is a human right. Okay, and uh, there we were able to see the connection of how you actually apply harm reduction in all uh, policies, or rather applicable to all policies of health delivery. Actually, one of the questions that was asked from the speaker is that how do you think there's a contradiction between harm reduction and human rights? Yes. And the speaker. This, uh, I, I hope I give justice to the answer. He said that no, it is in harmony with the, with each other. Yes, Human health education, health access is in direct uh, harmony with harm reduction. That's one. And then also, I think one of the highlights which I also like is the uh, presentation by Professor Dr. Pong Samart from Mahidon University, who talked about harm reduction in the event of face-to-face classes. Yes. So we are now. Yes. Yes. So we are in the transition of having face-to-face -face classes in the in the basic education. So I, uh, we've learned that they have uh, interventions quite similar to us, no? Quite similar to us. But I, one one difference that we've learned is that they have a national contact tracing system. They call it the Pacha, if I can remember correctly. So I think that is something we we learn from the harm reduction intervention by the Thai Ministry of Education and Ministry of Health for the Pediatric Age Group. So we, we have a national-wide contact tracing system. And to add to that, we had, of course, uh, we, we tackled the COVID speakers like for Dr. Eggwald to talk about the mobility-guided uh, modeling uh, to observe on the trends of how people are moving around and how they are affected by the COVID in the year 2020. And also, I had my, of course, my personally, my, my research students who presented to the laboratory parameters among COVID-19 to assess the severity. Pag nakita natin itong lab parameters sa dugo ay medyo tumataas or bumababa, ano na ang likelihood na mag-critical, severe, or mamatay ang pasyente. Mamatay pasyente. And the more we are in, we are educated to that, naku, pag ito na pala ang trend ng laboratory parameters niya, malamang sa malamang pwede mag-severe or mamatay. That's harm reduction because we're reducing harm once we're educated, we make all precautionary measures not to be to uh, getting worse or even dying. So, maganda yun. Then, we had your engineer come out to talk about the interquality. quality so Dr. Ronald said here. And also, we have your, also the research students of one of our co-conveners talking about the drug stockout. What are the useful drug stockout or yung mga gamot na pwedeng nawawala in stock yes, yes, during COVID-19? So, maganda yes. rin siya. I encountered that, Sir Peter. No? I will not mention the geographical location, but I just want to mention that I did experience some uh, dearth or lack of medical uh, medicine. No, I'm prescribing certain medications and all my patients will say, Doctor, this is not available. We all went all around the different pharmacies in the entire city. It's not available. Do we have an alternative? So I think logistics on medical supplies is important, no? Because if you have a uh, if you have a uh, rather a plan A, plan B, that's a harm reduction intervention, no? They make sure that this material, this uh, equipment, these uh, resources are available to the public. And that's we had uh, a basic of uh, of what it's like to have to manage our mental health during a health crisis like your COVID-19 pandemic by Dr. Vargas, a psychologist. So, uh, na-touch ang COVID, but of course, very timely then. Then we value the the discussion on indoor air quality that was discussed by the engineer. I, I think, Sir Ron, probably next next year, we should also look at the uh, issue on 
comorbidities, no? You know, we have yes. only been focusing on COVID, COVID, COVID. But what is, is the is the over interest and over focus on COVID? Is this causing harm in paying attention to the other diseases in the general public? What about I, I other think, people? You know what? Let me just comment this right away. When I ask you those questions, I can hear the passion coming out, the way Doc Ron started talking about the Bitcoin, uh, the human rights. And I, I think it, it was a really successful event. Um, I, I I can hear the enthusiasm from your voices. And I know I've taken up a lot of your time, but I just have this one final question that I hope you both can answer before I let you go. What can we expect from the Philippine Harm Reduction Forum next year? Yes, of course, we will still be continue reaching out to to help educating people to turn in aspects of harm reduction in public health. Now we have, we are extending our activity to our forum, involving researchers from our students. So that's the grassroots. Yun, Start them young. Help so, them young. Yes. So, tapos ang, ang inclusion pa sa kanila ay hindi na sila pinagsasalita lang. They are, they are talking to us very scientifically. This is sharing, a good, good, their, 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 the outputs of their research. So, very scientifically sound and training sa mga students pa lang. So, yun, na-involve ang students scientifically on the concepts of harm reduction. Also, we continue on helping also. The, the way we were being helped by other Ganditan, we would like also to help our counterparts in the region of Asian region in matters of harm reduction. And also, we hope, hopefully, we could do more researches to, to support other causes to harm reduction. Yes. And also, we would want to also recognize our dear partners, our our friends from uh, Red Whistle and their HIV prevention activities. Okay, probably in the, in the next uh, Philippine Harm Reduction, we'll have a bigger panel of speakers. We will try to make it as short but very informative. Yes. Okay, because we don't want the participants to lose attention. No? So, chunks of information. <laughs> Very engaging. Very timely. That's it. Very relevant. Uh, again, Prof. Ron, Doc Ron, I know you are very, very uh, busy professional. I thank you so much for your time. And uh, I, I look forward to more collaborations with you guys in the future. Thank you. Thank and, you, also, thank you and more power to your papers, Philippines. Thank you, Prof. Ron, Doc Ron. Um, so uh, there you go, guys. It um, basically the Harm uh, Reduction Alliance of the Philippines is a big umbrella group which uh, advocates on uh, focusing on uh, less harmful uh, means and uh, bet better alternatives um, to improve the public health of Filipinos. Now there are a couple of questions here that was uh, posted in the comment session. Let me just. Read one and uh, I'll try to answer them for you. So here's the question. Um, in the Philippines, uh, vape, vape products are now included or shortly will be in the tax code, which is a nod to the financial disruption that they have created, which means the loss of tobacco tax revenues and the like. Uh, regulations of the actual product, proportionate or not, is not yet to be tabled. Do you think? This is a viable and sustainable step towards a more reasonable regulatory uh, approach. Um, right now, vape products are currently being taxed, uh, I think, under RA11467, uh, which is, uh, in general, taxation is principle is uh, it should always be uh, risk proportionate and also dependent on the ability of the taxpayer to pay. Um, now, those that are supposed to be in the lower risk profile, like vapor products, should be taxed less to encourage um, the smokers, the traditional uh, tobacco uh, cigarette smokers, to shift to these potentially less harmful products. But uh, we have to take note that taxation is also a means of uh, a recognition that one is a legitimate product. So for me, I think... Um, as long as the taxation is reasonable and uh, risk proportionate, that's going to be a big win. And uh, 
I, I just hope that our politicians will, uh, you know, will, will, will see it the way I see it. Um, next is, uh, let me just check. Sorry, guys. Uh, I am being asked to comment uh, on the price of the Philippines as the ashtray. Um, my organization, uh, Vapors PH, um, I commend the I commend and I support the position taken by our uh, uh, Foreign Affairs Secretary, uh, Secretary uh, uh, Teddy Luxin. And uh, I know it might sound bad, but if this is the price for advocating uh, harm reduction principles, I'm sure the Philippine panel deserves it. Um, I think the, the Philippine panel should be commended for proposing changes in the draft declaration that are meant to reflect what is needed by governments to help adult smokers shift to less harmful products. I think it is just right uh, that the Philippine panel demanded transparency and accountability. Those who are most affected, of course, they have the right to know. What I cannot understand is why a cup is being run this way with, with respect to uh, tobacco products. You contrast it with COP26 on the environment, which, which is so open for the whole world to see. I think the proposals from the COP should obviously be based on uh, science, um, scientific evidence, and the growing uh, library of all these researches that we're, that we're, that we're seeing as a lot of people, uh, you know, focuses on, on this uh, novel product. And uh, significantly, all the scientific evidence points that it's, it is less harmful compared to a combustible uh, cigarette. Uh, finally, the WHO COP's refusal to acknowledge this fact, to me, is unthinkable. I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what else they're looking for. The evidence is there, facts are there, and still they refuse to, you know, um, they refuse to acknowledge it. So there, that, that, that's that's how I look at it. Let me just check. How do vaping advocates in the Philippines reach the ears and minds of regulators? What lessons can you share with other advocates around the world? Hmm. Let me just, okay. First and foremost is, if it's if you're doing something that you really love, and that's something that you are personally sold on uh, what you're doing, and if you believe in it, it's like selling. It's very easy to to sell a product that uh, that that, that uh, you are using and very comfortable with. So, I think um, here in the Philippines because of the of because of the COVID pandemic, we are not able to we are not able to host meetings and the like. So we have focused our way um, our efforts on reaching our members through uh, online initiatives. We've utilized all uh, social media platforms in order to share the messages and and the regulations. And if there are any um, what you call this. Um, uh, improvements or developments with the bill that is being currently passed. Now, as to the advocates around the world, never give up. Never give up. Science is there. <laughs> Always look back at where we first started. From one person, look at us now. We have the numbers. Our organizations have grown exponentially. So we're getting there. Do not be frustrated if it doesn't, if some of the things that we're doing or we have done did not work. I'm sure there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of other ways, and that is why we are here. What worked in the Philippines might work in other countries, and the other way around also. As to our regulators, we show them that we have numbers. By the end of the day, if we can um, accumulate 
enough advocates, then we can definitely effect change. But we have to start. If we don't start now, then when will, when will we ever start? So to those listening right now, if you have any questions about vaping, if there are any um, suggestions, the CAFRA team, the, this whole organization will be more than happy to hear you out. Oh, there's another question. After Bloomberg exposure as a corruptor of FDA, has foreign funding of NGO, academics, officials, etc. ended in the Philippines? Hmm. That's a very difficult question because I don't know that for a fact if it's still continuing. But what I can say is based on all the circumstances, definitely they've reserved, they, they, they have uh, received funding before. As to if is it still continuing? Unfortunately, I cannot answer that with a straight yes or a straight no. But I do know this, however, um, building up to the COP9 event, these organizations who, 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 who oppose vaping products, they were able to organize um, certain events to uh, drum up their, uh, to drum up their, what you call this, uh, efforts to uh, fight against the passing of the vape bill here in the Philippines. And these are big events. There are some uh, showbiz personalities being invited. Uh, I think there are some raffles. So uh, I think it, 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 there's, there's a lot of money involved in, in the organization of such event. Now where that money comes from, your guess is as good as mine. So here's another question. In the Philippines, Vapes are now included or shortly tax regulations. I, I think I have already answered this, but I'm just going back to taxation. Um, <clears throat> I think it's viable here in the Philippines. Um, because right now, we really the government really needs a stream of uh, revenue to in order to sustain uh, its governmental functions. Um, there are a lot of businesses... Uh, small, uh, medium enterprises here in the Philippines that has closed down uh, simply because it, it's tough uh, when, when you close for quarantine. How do you sustain the small businesses? So that has affected the uh, the taxation efforts of the government. So I think they will do it um, because that's another uh, channel where they will be able to generate money. I just hope that it is risk proportionate. And uh, either way, I think it's going to be a win for us. Because like I said earlier, it becomes an acknowledgement that vape products are legitimate products. Being regulated, that's why it's being taxed. Okay, there's a final question. Uh, okay, so uh, a message to the Philippine delegation at COP and to all COP delegates. To the Philippine delegate, especially Secretary Luxin, I commend you, sir. I commend you. The fact that you proposed those amendments that are based on science and evidence, it takes a man to stand by his principles and really speak out based on the science, what you've read and what's readily available. And to the other cup delegates, I think for the most part, it's a waste of time and it's a waste of money. Because the approach was never holistic. Those people, consumer groups like us, which is a big time stakeholder in this particular policy, none of us were invited. So what's the point? I mean, whatever regulation, whatever recommendation uh, the COP will come up with, it will always be half-baked because you never heard us. You never listened to the consumers, the very people who will be affected by, by these uh, regulations. 
And that's why to that extent, I, I, I'm really proud of our DFA Secretary Luxi. Um, if there are no other questions, um, I'd like to say thank you guys for, for listening and uh, trying to understand the, the vaping scenario, the harm reduction scenario here in the Philippines. And again, if you have uh, any questions, just, just, just message us. You see us in YouTube. Uh, follow us and uh, we'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Good night. You know. <laughs>